All right, welcome to the Freedom to Draw Unsolved Mysteries. I'm your host, John. Today's episode is an unexplained death. The FBI has reported that approximately 40% of the nation's homicides go unsolved. <clears throat> Today's case is that of Mark Harshberger. His wife and his name was Mary Beth Harshberger. We're gonna we're gonna start drawing it and we're gonna tell you a little bit about the case as we're drawing. Did a woman really confuse her husband for a bear on a hunting trip or was it murder? I saw the movement with my naked eye, but my scope magnified it. I then looked, and it was a bear. Mary Beth Beth Harshberger would tell Royal Canadian Mounted Police officers just hours after the fatal shooting in Canada. When Mary Beth Harshberger pulled the trigger on her rifle at dusk, she real she, did she really believe she was shooting a bear? Or was it more calculated shot by an experienced marksman to kill her husband, Mark, as his family believes? Mark and Mary Beth had once appeared to be a couple completely in love. He started a conversation with me a couple times. He said, Did you ever just look at somebody and know they were the right person for you? Mark's sister Sharon told investigators. The couple who lived in rural eastern Pennsylvania, which is a little town called Meshoppin, PA, in Northeast PA. I think it's in Wyoming County. They had a lot in common. Both were passionate and experienced hunters. She was very much for the outdoors, too, for hunting and fishing, Mark's dad says. Lee Harshberger told investigators she was very good with the rifle. She could shoot. Mark and Mary Beth also belonged to an exclusive thousand yard club where they shot at targets a thousand yards away. M had a collection of precision rifles with what Lee described as very good scopes. With the success of his job as a contractor, Mark was able to build the couple and their two young children a large cabin-style home in Pennsylvania and appeared to have achieved the epitome of its success. He even told his sister Susan, if I die tomorrow, I had a good life. He didn't know how foreboding that statement would turn out to be. Mark was a sh was shot to death in September 2006. During a family hunting trip, trip to Newfoundland, Canada with Mary Beth, the couple's two children, and Mark's brother, Barry. It had started as an idyllic trip. Mark shot a black bear and the groups killed a few caribou. It was a beautiful country, a beautiful trip, Barry said. He was more than happy with life, but the trip turned tragic. On the sixth day, when the hunting guy dropped Barry off to hunt by himself on a rainy, foggy night just before dusk, it was an excellent time. was an excellent time 
for game to come and move and feed. You know, with the early darkness, Barry recalled. Mark and the hunting guide went into the woods to try to scare up some game while Mary Beth waited with the rifle in the bed of the pickup truck with her children safely packed into the truck's cab. Mary Beth would later say that she saw movement and thought she spotted a bear in her scope when she fired from 60 meters away and shot Mark who had just been emerging into the clearing. The guide came up to the scene moments later. I said, what did you shoot at? He told investigators. She said, I shot a bear. Did I get him? I said, no, you've gotten Mark, he said. Mark had been struck in the chest and died instantly as Mary Beth sobbed. And the guide pulled her into the truck and they headed to pick up Barry, leaving the body lay. They come screaming and yelling. Mary Beth was crying and I didn't know what happened, said Barry. Mary Beth insisted to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police that she thought she was shooting at a black bear, not her husband. I saw the movement with my naked eye, but my scope magnifies it and I looked and I looked and it was a bear, she said in an interview just a few hours later. I think it was too dark to shoot, she said. But the story didn't sit right with most of Mark's family. And I did not know it was a one-shot deal, too. That makes it even more suspicious. The fact that it was only 60 meters in an open area, I mean, right at, immediately we had the instinct that this was, wasn't an accident. It just didn't make any sense, Mark's sister Sharon said. Mark's older brother, Dean, who had briefly lived with the couple, described Mary Beth as being controlling and physically violent, sometimes slapping Mark until his lips were bleeding. When Dean asked Mark if he was ever afraid of Mary Beth and would follow through on threats she had allegedly made and kill him, Mark told him, our love for each other is so strong that she'd never do it. And if she did, she'd be losing the best thing that ever happened to her. Other family members described how Mary Beth had isolated Mark from his family. Mary Beth, who had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, facilitated between temper tantrums and lavish spending sprees, they said. It got so bad about a year before Mark's death that she had gone into a psychiatric facility at Mark's suggestion, something his family believes she had never forgiven her husband for. Just five months before his death, the couple increased his life insurance to $500,000. The dis depiction of the marriage from Mark's family was a stark contrast from the way Mary Beth herself described the relationship. We had a perfect life, perfect marriage, the perfect family, she told him. Investigators, I loved him so much. He was my everything. I couldn't wait for him to come home from work. That's, that's what I lived for. The Mounties, seemingly believing it was an accident, let Mary Beth return home to my shopping. Barry tried to confront his grieving sister-in-law and began showing up more frequently to, take, to help take care of the kids. He eventually let his wife left his wife and moved in with Mary Beth. As the two began a romantic relationship, my brother's gone. It's no longer his life, Barry told investigators. 
Ask if he ever felt like he was trespassing on his brother's life. Barry believed his brother's death had been an accident. But the rest of the family wasn't so sure, and Dean eventually called the Pennsylvania State Police to see if they would insist the investigation. The police did gather information for R for the RCM. P, including evidence of a 1992 arrest of Mary Beth for assault and passed it on to the organization. 2008, two years after the shooting, Canadian authorities filed charges against Mary Beth for criminal negligence causing death. Prosecutors never contended that Mary Beth had shot her husband intentionally. She had been criminally responsible for pulling the trigger when it was too dark to shoot. Mary Beth fought extradition for two years, but was eventually sent to Canada, and the trial began in 2012. The defense argued that one night of the shooting, Mark had unknowingly exhibited the characteristics of a bear by wearing dark clothing and slowly walk, working his way down the hill. The outcome at the trial was determined by the judge who decided that Mary Beth was not criminally responsible for Mark's death. People cannot always act perfectly and even when people act reasonably, accidents unfortunately can occur, the judge said. Mary Beth was free to return home. But life wasn't exactly as she'd left it before. While she was incarcerated in Canada, Barry had run off with the babysitter and gotten married. Mark's family still believes they never received justice. This is the unexplained death of Mark Harshberger, guys. A lot of people thought that Mary Beth was the one that did it, but the judge did not see it that way. And who is really ever to know if she really did pull the trigger on purpose or if she did it on accident guys this is an unexplained death this is the freedom to draw unsolved mysteries and this is the case of Mark Harshberger from a shop in PA pretty much does it for this episode guys peace out